So ist das. Wo ist es in der Bucket Nähe? Well, I have um, the Atlantic Speed Fish and the next fish we just call a Mawan. Which, La- one, which one is it? This is the Atlantic Speed Fish. Why do I just took out the, um, the head? Yeah. Because it's kind of booty now. Right. And this one I did the same thing. Okay. So I just had to cut them in some slices. Now I have a soaking in the lime water for now. Lime water? Yeah. What does the lime do? Take out the fresh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it kind of take out the fresh and prepare it. Hey, all you. Southwest comes north, boy. <laughs> Happy to have you here, Neil. Yeah, good man. Good, good, good. Yeah, 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 man. How was it yesterday? But it was really nice. You know, the um, the kids on them had a blast. Right. We went down to um, Harry's Water Park in Dibby. Uh-huh. And um, after that, we went fishing at Stobos Bay in Chagaras. Very good, very good. And believe it or not, we left there almost maybe about half ten last night. Hey. So. And you had a good run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay, okay, yeah. We had some good fish, man. What do you have in this bucket here? This is um, a mangrove snapper. I took this kilo off already. Mangrove snapper? Yeah. Oh, I have, you, have an, you have another fish here, another, another mangrove snapper right here. Oh, we need a little red fish for him. Yeah, yeah. And you have some small arm. Um, we just call them Kavali. But you have a bro phone, you know? A bro is on the way today? A bro is on the way. Last time I say, come in to make the bro. What? So, nice, 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 nice. Nice, man. So, we, so we, could come, we, could, we could go any part of Trinidad and we could, we could, we could, we could show people that we, 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 we are able to catch fish. Yes. In every, co- in every corner. In every corner. <laughs> in every corner. The camera from all the other one. Yeah, they can't swim away. <laughs> Nice one. Nice so we had a green fig and I get some green fig on the counter there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. Good green fig you get, man. Wait, sir. Bring my line to my lap. Huh? Bring my line to my lap. Uh-huh. So my friends, Neil is doing the honors. He has the experience of being a big fisherman. But Neil, you okay with that, is it? No, don't worry, man. You can see? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah this is nice sound of like Neil like juice inside the fish here. Yeah, take see that I'm after. Yes, man. You have another one. I don't know juice on another thing. Yeah, you have plenty of juice on this. So you're going to mix the rest, water clean into this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll leave it in lime water to soak for a bit. Mm-hmm. Then you slice it up. Mm-hmm. And... I see you some nice videos, man. Going fishing, going on the trawler. Yeah, well, um... The channel name is Southwest Adventures. So every time we go on... An adventure, we, we put it up. Yeah, that's good, man. And, and um, my boy Caleb loved the outdoors. Uh-huh. Right? So, if you all want to see what we do, you just go down to YouTube, check check out Southwest Adventures. I discover a lot um, about the country life. Right. Right? Itakas is a, is a fishing village. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of animals being reared and all that. Mm, country see, life, typical country life. I see you interacting a lot with the um, Venezuelan cowboys. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we do have a, 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 a large Venezuelan population down at the Caracas. Uh-huh. Some of them have um, intermarried with the locals. So you're getting, um, you're getting some surname now like um, Maria, <laughs> um, Bisnat and all kind of thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you, man. But anyway. Um, they have they have integrated into the into the um the country life down at Ikakas. Mm-hmm. So our second language in Ikakas is, is, is Spanish. Eh? It might be the very first too. <laughs> <laughs> in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this mango snapper, snapper, right? Um, a lot of people, well, it, it, it would have been a little bit red in, red in color. But it really is a sweet fish. Mm-hmm. Really is a sweet fish. And for broth, mm-hmm. excellent fish for broth. Some people call it pag. Okay. So right. some people might know by the name pag. 
Pagi ya, ya. Apa ni? Apa ni? Nice, man. nice. Then I see I do a lot, of, a lot of work um, trying to uh, preserve the wetlands, boy. That's a remarkable job you're doing down there. Yeah, we try, we try, we try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we hoping that um, the, the the state could probably reach us halfway. I I think a good way to get it, to get started with our wetland is to make it a protected area. One, um, like no fishing, no hunting. Um, almost like a Ramasa site because there are a lot of birds nesting there and all that. When you say Ramasa site? Well, like all the Karanis are Ramasa site is, is a protected area. Ramasa? Yeah. Uh-huh. I think it's something to do with Ramasa Treaty. I don't have much details on it, but it's something to do with a UN re- um, resolution in keeping the, the um, area prote- as a protected area. Okay, okay. No hunting, no fishing, no, po- no poaching of the birds whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what initially drove you to be, you know, um, with this passion to protect your wetlands? What initially started up? Well, <clears throat> it's where I grew up, mm. right? And um, we grew up, our boy days was intermingling with the wetlands. Let's put it that way, going crabbing, hunting, fishing. Mm. Um, we going and cut mangroves to make duck pen, pig pen, whatever. So we were always like, I will call them swamp boys, mm-hmm. right? And um, it came to a point where you know you started to see the beauty of the, the wetlands being marred by garbage. And then I said, you know what? Something has to be done, and we started to do some cleaning and then, then I had a big um, clean-up campaign, I organized a clean-up campaign that the wetlands, we got, we got a, um, more than a truckload of rubbish mm. and since that we started to get some signs up mm. and um, I think, I mean, we started to see a little difference in the, in the mindset, we started to see people throwing less garbage now but I think the, the state could probably help us by making the area, protected area and Maybe installing some cameras there. It has a lot of potential for ecotourism one. And um, even people who do environmental studies and, and um, biology, bi- biological studies about birds and species on the wetland, they could come down there and, and get a lot of information. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that mm-hmm. people from the university and all that. So your general population down there um, responds favorably to the work? Yeah, like um, I mean, I would say I would say yes. You know, people um like the idea of having the wetland clean. Some may or may not participate. They may not participate directly, but indirectly. Okay. You know, but <clears throat> you guys see that 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 is our little gem, and we have to. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. I agree. That is yes. our little gem because anybody driving to Ikakas. They must make a stop, a pit stop at our wetland and take a selfie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm telling you, anybody who You know, every there, time we go down there, no matter how many because times... Because it's a breathtaking view. It is yes, a breathtaking view. Uh, no matter how often we go down there, Louis always wants to stop. By the wetland. By the wetlands, yeah. Catch a little shot, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, as much as I'm on this vlog, I would appeal to anybody who, who is visiting that area, please, Take your garbage with you. You can take as much pictures as you want, but don't, but but don't leave the garbage. Hmm. Take as much pictures. Well, well, I mean the wetlands down there are the only places that um. I think generally. Generally, we, 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 we just, need to be educated. We need to change our mindset. Eh? Definitely. I think it's a, it's a culture that we need. You go to a beach, like even don't have concerns when they come to the beach, and they leave. A whole set of plastic bottles and styrofoam plate and all that. I mean, mm-hmm. I saw we were there just a couple of days ago, uh-huh. and the beach was really clean. Yeah, well, CPEP, I wanna, I wanna shout out CPEP Picacas. They're doing a wonderful job yes. in keeping the community clean. Yes, indeed. Wonderful, that. wonderful job, CPEP Picacas. I must commend them on that. If there's one people pay, I wanna see raise. It's CPEP. Yeah, yeah, they're doing a wonderful job. I must say that. Mm. They're doing a wonderful job. 
And you recently had a, 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 a kite flying competition. Yes, yes, yes. That was your first venture into that kind of social uh, event? Yes. Well, actually, I had, king, I had hosted King of Champion and but um, the kite flying was our first time for the village. Yeah. And um, it was really nice. I was, I was amazed to see so much of kite design, right? So again, if you want to check out the kite flying competition, I have it up on YouTube. You just go up to Southwest Adventures and you will see some huge marble and a real variety that's of right, kites. That's right, that's right. I think I had around 30, about 38 kites registered for the competition. We had a little challenge with the win, but nevertheless, it, we pulled it off. But the win is what you needed. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we open, I mean, if all goes well, um, we could probably host it again next year. You remind me very much of your Uncle Frankie boy. Frank Jose? Yeah, yeah, Uncle Frankie is one of the Frankie is one of the, the pioneers of um, doing a lot of things in the carcass yeah, for the youth. Yeah. Eh? Three Peso Club. No, even before that. Even before that. before that. Long before that. Organizing like football matches. Yeah, right back there. in 1970 when I first went down there. Uh -huh. Frankie and, uh, and I think the name of the side was Chelsea. Chelsea? Yeah, Chelsea Football Club. Okay, okay. And they, they did a lot of social work down there. They got all the young men to come together to play football, cricket. Yeah, we, we, we need we need those kind of thing in the village, but you yeah, know, like yeah. to bring a little. There were matches in the, in, in bonus area, Granville. See, as small as this event, you know, it, it brings the community together. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, even even the kite flying tradition kind of mm -hmm. slowly dying away. It kind of you know it kind of. But we were parable not too long ago, and, uh -huh. and surprisingly, the fellas up there had a lot of kites. A lot of kites. They, they had an issue where you, you talk about the win was a challenge, but no win was a challenge up there. The win was very, very, very low that day. Yeah, okay. we went up there and it was that particular day we went. There was no win that they could mount the kites. Mm -hmm. Nice looking problem. So all of this is going to go into the broad? Well, what, what, what are you going to put into the broad really? Those two there. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe I wanna I wanna have the mango snapper in because to me this is one of the most tasty fish. Right. Does it melt a lot in when you do it? Well, it, it? but what happens? Way what we want to do I, ideally is not throw it in too early into the broth. Right. Because you know the flesh tends to kind of separate from it. Okay. You know, so you wanna throw it in just about in the right time. Mm. So I'm waiting for lasana, lasana. By the time lasana come back, it will mean that the fish will already been. Um, clean and yes. probably season kusume a little bit. Mm. Is it kusume? Kusume. Kusume? Kusume. <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> well, I, I hear people use that term. I don't know if it is right. like when you put it in the seasoning, you leave it to marinate. Some people say marinate. Ah. So is it like Hindi word? I don't know. Kusume. But I, I hear people. I heard people use that word already. Kusume. Okay, so you maybe, see. maybe, maybe marinate and kusume means <laughs> have the same, the same meaning. <coughs> Excuse me. Take care of saying things you don't know, you know. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sure we'll have, I'm sure we'll have already. Yeah, 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 lots of things we pick up in our dialect that we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we Trini, just, yeah? we just kind of Trini, apply. Trini, Trini, Trini's are unique, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we just apply it, right? We just apply it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Neil, tell me something, apart from the fishing, the wetlands, what about your own backyard garden and stuff? What would you have? Well, I, I, I always maintain a kitchen, uh, a backyard garden. Mm -hmm. I have this space one. And then down where we live, we have an abundance of cow dung. Okay. So manure is always free. Yes, yes. They yes. just walk around and when they dry, they pick them up. We call them like a cow cake. Uh -huh. And then, you know, you, you just mix it into the loamy soil that we have there. And yeah, you could produce your own little seasoning and tomatoes and what have you, pimentos and stuff like that. Okay, that's good. But I, I, I love gardening. I mean, it, I, I feel good just to get up in the morning and just tend to plants. Yeah. I think last time I have something going on. Oh, yes, 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 it must be in the blood, eh? Yeah. So I, 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 I enjoy just getting up and tending to my um, plants. Yeah. I walked around your yard that night we were there uh -huh. and I saw your, um, your popo tree flourishing. And I remember seeing on a video where you, you said that um, something somewhere, somebody in Africa said if Well, actually, uh -huh. Uncle Wingrove, uh -huh. he would have been spent some time in, in Liberia, right? Uh -huh. And um, I had this purple tree, and for some, some reason it wasn't 
bearing fruits. Yes. And he, he, he said in Africa, they would get that tree to bear. So he, I to, he asked me, he, well, he told me actually what, what I should do. He said, get a stick and send it to the middle of the tree. Uh -huh. And I, when I did that, there was... Yeah, I saw that video the, yeah, and the tree, I, the tree, I was amazed. Yeah, the tree, the tree started bearing... Right now, I have a, a good bit of a boy in the tree. I wonder what is, what is the, um, the logic behind it? What does it really do? You ever further try to find out? I never really researched it now, but it's, but it's amazing to see that this wedge that I put between the tree actually worked and yeah, the tree started bearing. Yeah. Have you ever been to Guyana? I see we have a, a plaque there. I see Guyana, God's own country. No, no, I've never been to Guyana. Yeah, I would Guyana. like to visit though. Yes. Somebody was telling me that they're having some ferry that will, will, will be um, operating soon between Trinidad and Guyana. Really? That should oh, be somebody, interesting. Somebody, somebody, was, somebody mentioned that. Oh, that should be really Like an inter-island ferry between Trinidad and um, Guyana. Okay. Yeah. Well, Nina, I'm going to leave you a little bit and, and you talk about backyard gardening. Let me see how Mr. Silence' garden looked like this morning. Um, what's the next step from here? Yeah, well, I'm going to slice them up, get them, get them, get them in the um, in the lime water. Okay, what do you want to do? You want to slice them inside of that kitchen there inside? No, 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 I'm going to slice them right here. You're and about I'm... to slice. You're about to slice them? No, I, I still have to remove the um, the gut. Okay, will you shout out to me then? No problem. Okay, nice to talk to you, man. Okay, I'm glad to have you up with us. Oh, yes, folks. That was Neil of Southwest Adventures. He and his family are here. I'm glad to have them. Actually, Neil is Louise's nephew. So, let's see what the garden does. This garden is not going to produce any fruit, but it's going to be um, beautiful in its own way. Like, for instance, we have this ginger lily here. Beautiful, beautiful. I walked out the other day and, and in, in the backyard down there, there was one huge iguana looking for the juiciest bit of either patchoy leaves or something like that. Oh yes. Mama Lou is resting still. Lasana is very creative. Creativity and sensitivity, they go together. He's sensitive about what looks good. And look, he has cut these bottles. The bottle top, it seems. The, but the bottom of the bottle. And there is... Oh, so he's made a, he's made a little um, canopy for the plant. Very clever. Very, very clever. This one has come off. I need to put it back. Maybe it's too big for this one. Oops, oops, no. I better not interfere with that. I admit to not having a green thumb in the least. Tomato tree is doing pretty good. I love this little section here. Oh my. I am so thrilled to see his handiwork. Asana was always a young man, a boy as a matter of fact then, always willing to do things. Always willing. He was never afraid to launch into something. He trimmed back these trees and there's a lot of promise of things doing well. This room here was started by my brother-in-law, Wayne. Nasana did one day come and remove the roof. And I was appalled when I came from work and I said, Sana, what are you doing? And he wanted to change the design of the roof. Of course, I was nowhere near his skill. So I was alarmed. But I am thrilled to say that Lasana was given a very free hand here. And in those days, he did do a lot. One time he, he, dug, he dug up all this area here. 
He was making a duck pond. And when I came home, I said, my goodness, what are you doing? They did succeed in having some ducks, I think. But then the dog, the duck must have pushed his head through the fence there. Yeah. And that was the end of the project. The dog got the better of the duck. And even all these here, this area has been an eyesore for the longest while. And Sana has created something very, very, very beautiful. Morning sun shows it up lovely. The Baji tree. I guess he, he has some of his grandfather's blood too. My dad was a man who planted a lot in Cora, you know. And um, I came along at a time when it was easy to reap. So I didn't know the sweat of gardening. I didn't know the appeal of agriculture or anything like that. But I tell you the truth. Tell you the truth. Sana has done a wonderful work here. Everything looks so up to mark. So beautiful. I really admire the young man's talent. I really do. He's placed the Bergen Villa up on a height because it was on the floor area. And he has put it at a height where it could be better appreciated. This area I never could keep clean. And he has done a wonderful job. A really wonderful job. All his potted plants. Even in this area here, it was quite a task to keep it healthy, clean. But he is doing marvelously well. And he bought this, this little spray can here. has transformed. You know, I am at this point in time showing you this garden and I have become very emotional. I've become very emotional when I think of all that has gone into this work here. And Shannon does not demand my help. He, all he does is want me to be around as he works. I feel I'm so happy that Sana you know let's say the wind there the wind comes the neighbors tree seem to be you know growing towards us. You know what that means friend? What is on my side will be my my own <laughs> But of course, we have very good neighbors. Very, very good neighbors. As a matter of fact, our neighbor has given us this uh, garden of fruit. Three years. A lonely close clip. A lonely close clip. But you know something? Lonely but retrieved. Isn't it like life? Lonely patches in life. You fall to the ground, but you could be back up again. Life in itself. So, my friends, is a little tour of a, love, a wonderful work. I mean, when, when, you, when you think of what Sally is doing here, and you think of his being able to share this with us. I won't go further. I won't go further with comments. And he knows how to beautify things. This is placed right in the garden. Right in the garden. Let 
next to me Hachoi with my save. I really feel I would like to secure this tree here. I don't know that I've done a good job. You mightn't be happy. We show advertising blue waters. And Blondie's liquid laundry detergent. Hmm, these people know how to these gardeners know how to be creative. You know, creativity is a wonderful thing, you know. I started to say that a while ago. But we have to be so sensitive about how we create. We don't want to create and people don't spot the beauty of what you create. It's easy to come along and say that something isn't good. Something should be done another way. But creativity is wonderful when you have it. If you have an eye for creativity and you have a mood for creativity, you will have good results. And I think that a good God of heaven is absolutely creative, giving us an opportunity to produce something wonderful. You ready, my friend? Huh? Are you cutting yet? Yeah. You started to cut? I need something to, to, to probably just... Mm. You're pretty good, honey. Uh, pretty good. We're going to just put a bag. Huh? We use, yeah, we use bags. Right? We have bags and we're going to have to dispose of it somewhere along the line. We can probably put it into the deep freeze Monday. Mm -hmm. The truck will pass. That's when you're away, uh, uh, a day or two away, you know. Morning, morning, Miss Vashti. How are you? Very good. Yeah. We put all of that and then we put it in the freezer to find a spot, right? Maybe I don't know why they do with my fish cuts and in home. Yeah, you put it in behind the plants. A berry? The berry? And it actually has a lot of minerals and nutrients in it. Okay. And the plants get them back. Well, what we could do is raise and find out where Sarah will want that berry if he wants it at all. But um, the only thing I'd be mindful like if you have dogs around, they could. You could. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know what I want to or we have cats around. Hold on. Vashti, help yourself now. There's, you know, you can, um, check the fridge and all that stuff. Yes, yes. If you don't have... No, so what do you do? Put it, let's put it up in the fridge, yes, sir? Put it out. Yeah, put it out. If you have scale or whatnot, you can put the scale into. No, no, we just kind of wash the scale off. Okay, right, fine. You go ahead. I'm going to put this here. Look, look, get a nice bottle. Try two bags. Right? Stick them in the deep freeze somewhere. Yeah, okay, fine. Do you have anything like that for you to like... What, the pocket? The, the bone are a bit stiff now. The bone stiff? Uh, let's see. Do you have anything? Yes, I have it have somewhere along the line. Mm, where's my hammer now? Where do you want your hammer going? You want to send for um, David Rada? Um. Okay, so he wants something to crush the bone. Yeah. I don't know where my hammer is, that's the only problem. Sarah probably has it in the back. Uh, okay. This will not be sufficient, the handle. No, no, it was some Okay, let's go back to the back, see if we can get something. So now I'm hammer hunting. Hammer hunting. Okay, I got something here that will do that, do the trick. A block. This will work. So this is Saturday morning in Trin City. Here, Neil. It isn't, it isn't the worst thing, but it, it will work. Once you don't damage the blade. But it, it should work. Look, give it a tap. Give it a tap on the, on the, on the, on the thing side. It works? Yeah, man. Primitive man had to use rocks, you know. 
but we're going to step ahead of blocks. Oh, so now you got a, a, a whole um, basin full, buddy? Yeah, plenty of fish, man. If we had to survive last time, well, we would have been good. Ah, yeah, so all of this should go into the broth, eh? I don't think I use all that. The men use all of that. But at least the mangrove snapper, I wonder if that does make it. That's be a game changer in the broth. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, man. Yes, this this is a soft fish, so it'll be easy to slice. Okay. So you do a lot of fish broth in Gagas, eh? Yeah, fish broth is a common thing down there. Mm -hmm. Uncle Tony was a good fish broth man, yeah, eh? Yeah, Uncle Tony, mm -hmm. Uncle Tony was very good at making uh, fish broth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's he fishing like these days? He eats a lot of fish? Well, Right now, they, um, from what I understand, they're getting some shrimp at night. Mm -hmm. We actually go sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's something that they could probably um, mm -hmm. see on my channel, how they get shrimp. Yeah. Cactus is the only place. Cactus is the only place in Trinidad that actually get shrimp at night. Really? It's the only place in Trinidad that they do that kind of shrimp in. What's it there? So it? if you guys want to see how they get the shrimp at night, uh -huh. you could check out my channel. I have some some nice um, footage on that. Mm -hmm. How they get the shrimp at night. Well, actually, they, they call it jinga. Mm -hmm. The jinga actually is the Hindi word for shrimp. Right. So when uh, our ancestors came to work on the estate, something I understand, that would have been somewhere in the 19... Early 19s. Yeah, early, yeah. New, yeah and, um, they, they actually used to use the coconut branch. I from what I understand, they plait it with uh -huh. a vine uh -huh. and make something like a scene. And they pull it, pull it to the shore and get enough shrimp to eat. Yeah, really. You ever try? You ever try? Yeah, um, Reenacting that? I some Mr. Um, Chedia who passed some time ago. Mm -hmm. he, he told me about it, and um, we were in the process of getting it done, but it didn't, it didn't come to fusion. But it would be a, it would be a, a wonderful experience to try. And, it, and you know, back then had a lot of shrimp. Eh? Mm -hmm. Back then, on a lot of shrimp. The carcass was a flourishing place when it comes to. <clears throat> I remember shrimp. being on the beach at night. Mm -hmm. Those few times I went out on the beach at night, mm -hmm. and you seen all the flambeaux all along the beach. beach yeah, yeah. And the women sitting picking, picking the shrimp. Right. So, I have some videos where you actually still have the flambeau lighting, uh -huh. and the same scenario that you would have seen some years ago. Yeah. The same exists today. Ah. Same exists today. But generally, fishing, like how we you know, you talk, you talk about night fishing, not, not just with the shrimp. Mm -hmm. I remember they call it, um, what is it called? Fillet? Uh, fillet fishing. Yeah. Right? It still is a lot of fish, or, or hardly anybody goes out now? They go out, but um, there's, always, there's always the risk of um, attack. attack at sea, at night. There's always a risk. Um, some of the challenges that the fishermen face down by us is. Um, the gasoline price, uh -huh. um, arm robbery. They get sometimes they get problems for so beat. They have some challenge even with the Guardian National. Even like, lower waters. Sometimes, well, if there's no command presence out at sea, they will they will come out, they will they will get a boat over on our territorial waters and take it back and say that they were caught here. And sometimes they they they, 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 they ask for money and all that so. And that's, a big, challenge, that's challenge. a big statement you made there. Yeah, it's a big challenge for you. But you, you know it to be like that at times. Meaning? Oh, meaning when you say they will come here and grab a boat, carry it back. It happened, it had, it had instances where boats were, they actually 
and chase boat into well into our territorial waters. Actually, okay. people were on shore and they saw, okay. they saw them chasing the boat okay. up to the shore. Right? Okay. And it's a big ransom fee. But sometimes they, they ask for stuff mm. in an effort to get the boat released because you know when you go down in that in those parts, the system is so corrupt. Mm. Well, you know, Neil, I went out once with um, one of my brother-in-laws mm -hmm. and I wanted to experience this fillet fishing, you know? Fillet fishing. Mm -hmm. You actually went out? Yeah. Really? How yeah. was it? Well, it was good. The waters were calm, but you could tell that there was a lot of water on the other side. <laughs> and, and, and those lanterns were lit place on the bow. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if there was one on the um on the stern. But anyway, the lanterns were lit and we just sat there gently rocking, no breeze, it just nice and clean. But the place was dark. And you saw all the stars in the sky. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice. Beautiful. But then we I started to worry about you know a vessel coming and not being able to really see us. I looked at the shore and it was quite a long way off and I didn't figure that soon I could. But I don't know if I could have made that distance in. Hmm. And I said to my companion on the boat, I think I had enough of this. <laughs> and we headed back there. We, we, we had to pull up, pull in the scene. And that was it, you know? I never ventured out again. Well, Uncle Boom gave us a story one time where he went out, fillet, and um, the lantern extinguished. Uh -huh. And um, they were in the dark. And then. I don't know for what reason if it, if it extinguished, if it is that uh, um, the kerosene um, was finished in it, uh -huh. or if the wick has uh, was burnt out, uh -huh. and um, there was this big ship approaching them dead on, and um, they were there in the boat, and they were actually seeing this big ship coming up in a little bit of moonlight, dead on to hit the boat, uh -huh. and he said the only thing he could have done, he threw some gas into the water, and he strike a match on it, and it light. Oh, that was up. very clever. So gas, if you throw gas on water and you light a strike a match, it will light up. So it light it lighted up and illuminated the area and the ship altered in ample time to avoid making contact with him. That was brilliant. Yeah. A man like Boom will go wrong in history, man. <laughs> eh? No, but remember, well, I mean I guess when you're in a distressing situation you have to be able to, to come oh up with goodness. Yeah, yeah, everything, everything. So So our fish is all look at that yes brother and soaking in that lime juice so we're just gonna give it a wash out now yes 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 and i'll retain the presence of sana yes and the sana will take over this video from there you will do it right from there on right yeah man this is as a preparatory stage neil thank you very much You're welcome man <laughs> nice to have you up here southwest has adventures has come up to the north good with the day, family day. so do have a good day and all the best in the future with your projects in Thank the you wetlands and otherwise. Uh, you're welcome, sir. All right, good.